everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach. Here we talk about overlanding, gear builds, DIY, all sorts of stuff related to modifying your vehicle. And today we're gonna be doing kind of a little more chill video. I'm gonna show you some updates to some things that you might be interested, you might not be. A lot of you are asking about my DIY rooftop tent. So this is gonna be kind of like a shop talk. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, got a lot of work to catch up on. Um, so I made a night coffee. <laughs> And I got this cool Dobinson's cup from the More Expo. So shout out to Dobinson's. More Expo was fun. Thank you to all of you who came out and hung out at the Sherpa booth, said hi. Uh, it was fun to see all of you, talk build, talk shop, all that sort of stuff. So a good time. Uh, I would be, we gotta take this time to <laughs> shout out Lift Kit. So if you guys don't know, haven't watched any of my last videos, I'm still drinking beadlock coffee. It's amazing, awesome stuff. Working with them this year and it's great coffee. This I think is my third today, so <laughs> might be slightly addicted, uh, but coffee's great. So try it, it's really good stuff. And uh, yeah, so if you're kind of not familiar with my rooftop tent project, basically I've been working on building my own rooftop tents probably two years ago. I started looking at some of the aluminum sort of clamshell style rooftop tents in the industry. I was like, that's really cool. Uh, you can buy aluminum extrusions, which are pretty DIY friendly. Maybe I can build one. And that's where I started. And I quickly kind of learned and started to appreciate uh, what makes a good rooftop tent, or at least start to understand the side of the craftsmanship behind it. And man, oh man, our rooftop tent projects, it's a fabric project. It's really, in my opinion, not a fabrication project. I think that the clamshell, or if you decide to do wood like some people do, whatever you do, that stuff is sort of the easy part of the project. And so a lot of you keep asking for an update on the actual fabric. So I'm gonna kind of give you one. Um, but I will say this, I do regret some of the fabric that I bought. Uh, and I don't know if I could buy anything better really, but after having my James Broad tent and you know basically running that for this year as of now anyways, since my rooftop tent isn't even being done built, um, it's pretty insane how nice and how well designed the James Broad fabric is. It kind of blows my mind uh, and I couldn't stop telling people about that at the More Expo. It's really something that I think sets apart tents. So more and more I've really kind of come to the realization that when you're picking a rooftop tent or trying to decide on which one to buy, there are a lot of different things to take into account like features and you know the size of the tent, the weight of the tent, those sorts of things, how they mount to your rack. But more and more, those are pretty universal across the board. You're gonna get maybe a medium sized tent. If it's a clamshell, they're kind of all the same clamshell. Uh, it's kind of cool that Top Oak has that folded fabric that goes back so you've got more headspace. So that's cool. Um, but a lot of them, it really comes down to the fabric. Like, is the fabric gonna be waterproof? How durable is it? Is it gonna withstand like animals scratching it or like heavy winds? Is it gonna flap in the wind a lot? Is it going to trap in moisture? Is it gonna breathe moisture? Do you have clear plastic? Do you just have screens? You know, these are all things that you start to think through when you're picking out the fabric. Cause at the end of the day, this is a rooftop tent. It's not a rooftop box. And so when you open it up, you want that fabric to really do its job and be a nice tent. Uh, so I will walk you around my rooftop tent project progress so far. Um, and I'll kind of just share with you some of the things that I'm doing. I'll share some of the design as well because I think some of you might be interested in that and just give a bit of a status update. In addition to that, I also want to show you a couple of new tools and things I've gotten for the garage. I'm slowly but surely trying to kind of renovate my garage and improve it. And I have some other projects that have kind of come up that might make it worse. And so <laughs> we'll talk a little bit more about that too. But uh, stick around, I think it's gonna be a fun one. I'm just gonna talk you through some of the stuff going on at home in the shop. All right, let's jump into it.
All right, well, this is my garage setup. And as you can see, it's a bit of a mess, uh, but that's because I actually don't have a super large garage space. It's basically a single stall, one, two stalls deep. So, you know, you could fit like two cars front to back, uh, but trying to work with what I've got here, it doesn't help that I've got rooftop tents taking up the bulk of the space. Unfortunately, my garage space, as you can see, is like eight feet on a good day, but really about seven feet. So the Forerunner uh, can't easily pull in here with anything on the roof. So thankfully I do fit under a seven foot garage door with my 35s on. Uh, but one thing that's been kind of bothering me that I need to figure out is the ceiling in here is super poor framing. So there's kind of some just older style framing that was designed, I think, for not a very large roof load. So in order for me to put in an eight foot garage door or redesign any of that, uh, some of the roof will need to get reframed. So I don't think it will be impossible. It's something I'm debating tackling, uh, but obviously gonna have to pull permits and do all kinds of stuff to get that sorted. In the meantime, I've been trying to set this space up at least for more DIY friendly projects. So when I assembled this whole garage drawer system, rolling tool car, tool chest, whatever you wanna call it, uh, when I put it all together, I didn't really know how to lay out the tools exactly how I wanted, but right now the layout is super sweet. I've been using the tool chest kind of set up how it is for a while now. That footage I showed you before is actually from a while ago, but I just wanna kind of show you the layout that I've used. Maybe this is useful for you, maybe not. So the top drawer, I keep all kinds of random stuff. I've got locks, I've got keys, I've got some red art koozies, you know, all of the essentials, uh, just zip ties, kind of basic stuff. In this drawer, I keep all my sockets. I've got lots of socket wrenches, you know, combo wrenches, extensions, pivots, all kinds of stuff, little adapters for impact drivers, all kinds of stuff. I really like having that all super accessible because since I do a lot of automotive stuff, it comes in super handy. Uh, over here, these are smaller drawers. This is one of the attachments. In this drawer, I keep my gloves, measuring tape, typically some box cutters, but they're, oh, here's one. Gotta remember to put stuff away. Down here, we've got wire cutters, needle noses. In here, we've got some screwdrivers. I've got another thing of screwdrivers in the other room. Some vice grips, crescent wrenches, channel locks. And then some down here, got some a rivet gun. And down here at the very bottom, I've got some of my air tools and my tap and dies. So that's kind of all smaller stuff. If we come over here, this is where I keep all of my massive combo wrenches. So this is where, you know, the big automotive combo wrenches come in and some pry tools and a breaker bar and a pickle fork, I think this is called. Is this called a pickle fork? I think so. I don't remember. Keep on moving down through here, all my drill bits. Half of them are kind of out being used right now. In this drawer, this is a wiring drawer. My soldering iron and heat gun and all kinds of stuff will sit over here. But I got lots of stuff that I always try to have on hand. Down here, we've got a sweet torque wrench. Shout out to Harbor Freight. They sent me this digital torque wrench. It is awesome, super nice. Uh, and then over here, we've got just a laser level, my hydraulic wire crimping tool and some other things. In here, this is just a miscellaneous wire drawer. I've got a lot of battery wire and wire for lights, since you know, guys know I love lights. This drawer is actually a power station sort of setup. So you can, on this side, you can't see it, but there's a big power strip and you can put battery charging stations in there. I've got too many battery chargers right now, so I just keep them on my wall. Kind of last but not least, I've got some overflow on this side. So, so I'm doing my best to utilize the space in this tool chest. I haven't even filled it all up yet, but I do a lot of DIY work. I bought a pretty big fixer upper of a house. So I've been doing work on the house and doing lots of stuff on the Forerunner, um, trying to do as much as I can myself to save a little extra money. So yeah, that's essentially this space. So I just wanted to share my experience using this toolbox so far. It's really nice. Um, I've talked to a lot of people in the automotive industry that work for Toyota and some of the other t car dealerships here in town. I know some guys who are just mechanics and they rave about this US General line. So that was part of the reason that I wanted to get one in the first place. And being that Harbor Freight's been a supporter of me, uh, they were down for it as well. So I was pretty stoked for that.
All right, well, let's jump back to the rooftop tent. I'm gonna show you a little bit of the fabric and just some of the details that I've been thinking through as we've been putting together this rooftop tent. I was gonna quick give you another little look at this. I've got some lights that I've temporarily put up, but as you can see, it's like my roof is like two by four framing. And then I've got some cross boards here that I forget what they're called exactly, rafter ties. No, I think the rafter ties go up right up there. These are collar ties, rafters, collar ties, floor joists, I don't remember. Um, but anyways, yeah, not super structural and I don't want to reinforce it without talking to a structural engineer, but I really want to redesign this so I can put in an eight foot door and I can win like winch and hoist up my rooftop tent into the ceiling. So we'll see maybe eventually. I've probably shown this before, but I've got this miter saw set up from Hercules and it's actually pretty wild. It's got like this feature where it slides back and forth and so you can chop saw like I think up to 18 inch boards or something, super sweet. And also been using the Hercules table saw. I've been cutting a wide range of plywood and super handy. I've gone through probably 30 blades on this Hercules saw, cutting drywall, doing all kinds of stuff. So I know I'm working on my Forerunner so often, but there's so many tools that I have from the Hercules line that I've now had for like over a year that I've done so many house projects with. And so far they're all holding up really well. The Hercules batteries, I've had a couple of those fail and I've had to buy lots of new blades and drill bits, but those are kind of consumables. So another little glimpse at the James Broad tent. Thing so awesome. Go check out my video on that. Right here is my cooking bin that holds all my camping gear, cooking stuff. The trail wash system from Sandy Cats. That's always an essential as well. Spare tire doing my diff oils recently, flushing those since I was at like 5,000 or 15,000 after my gear redo. So funny enough, I don't own a grill, but this is a full propane tank for someday when I get a Howl campfire. Man, that thing was awesome at More Expo. I would love to get one of those. Also, I guess I didn't show a whole lot in here, but got some Land Cruiser parts, some extra parts from my C4 bumper and yeah, uh, we got some some rubber gloves. One thing that's been pretty sweet is I buy these orange gloves off of Amazon all the time, and these little slide-in magnetic holders for gloves are so sweet. So I've been using those. I've got masks for around for dust, some shop towels, your typical paper towels. Try to get all the goodies easily accessible. Got one of these little things too, but I gotta swap it out for black. I'm not a blue painted guys so i'll have to change that out but all right well let me know if you've got any questions this setup has been pretty sweet so far and dang it's long i think it's like over 100 inches long so <laughs> it's taking up a lot of space right now okay so this is kind of at an awkward height but i'm just going to do the best i can to explain some of this stuff so if we move some of these materials aside here you can kind of see that this is the actual fabric for the rooftop tent. So what I've got here is the triangle. So this is gonna be one of the side doors. And basically what we landed on was if we just put in three big doors, it will allow for nice windows, nice breathe breathability. Uh, basically right now what we've got is we've got the attachment for the fabric to the actual extrusions. And that's all done on all three sides. And then we have an attachment piece that will go down here at the bottom. And then we have sewn in the screen door. So now what we have to do is cut out the back side of this fabric. And then we're gonna put in a rain flap door over the top of this. So we've got a couple more days of sewing left before this is actually done and can be installed in the extrusions. But we're making progress. We went through a couple of different designs on the screen. Uh, but this screen is really thick, really durable. It should be good enough for bugs, but it'll allow like a dog to scratch it or whatever and it won't be ripping in any capacity. It's got nice YKK zippers and I'll kind of show you a little bit more about that. Um, but I wanna show this right here really quickly. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different fabric things that we kind of decided on. So let me grab an aluminum extrusion and I'll just show you the thought process. So. 
Okay, so here's an aluminum extrusion and here is our fabric. So the fabric we landed on is this sort of gray canvasy fabric. It's got a tighter weave uh, and it's fairly heavy duty, but it's not as heavy duty as my actual like James Barrow tent, but it's still quite nice. I think it's gonna be sweet. So the thing that you have to think about, and let me grab a piece of scrap material. Now don't, don't get too carried away with me here in the comments. Like I'm not trying to be a professional about sewing, but these are some of the things I've learned so far and it will maybe help to put in perspective why rooftop tents cost a lot because there's a lot that goes into this sewing that's pretty impressive. One thing I'll mention here, I'll be totally transparent. I think I'm over $2,000 into this tent in raw materials. Now I've bought a lot of nice aluminum, I've bought a lot of nice screen and fabric. I'm experimenting a little bit, but I thought that this was gonna be a lot cheaper and it hasn't been. So if you're trying to build like a high quality rooftop tent, you might be able to buy one for cheaper. Um, but this has been a really fun project and I've learned a lot. So just to start out with the basics, here is our fabric. And basically what happens is, is anytime you cut this fabric, it has the risk to fray. So this is what I think they call a salvage edge. And so what you end up needing to do is you have to fold this over and you have to sew, you have to double stitch over this, or I think, I don't know, single or double stitch, but you have to stitch over this. And so what we ended up doing is like, here's an example where see how there's no salvage edges exposed here. So what this piece of fabric is, is it's a piece of, I don't know, six inch fabric or so. And what you do is first you fold it once, just like this. So you fold it in half and now you have a piece like this. That is what's going on right here. You've got like this piece that's folded in half. And so then you can run a stitch down there and that's what will create the space that this slides in. So you, you run that first stitch down the fold and that's what we've got, right? Okay, well, so now you have the stitch right there, but then you have two salvage edges down here. So what we then did is you take your salvage edge and you tuck it in on both sides. And so then you get something that looks kind of like this. So you run a stitch down here for the folds to take care of the salvage edges and then you run a stitch right through here to actually create the spacing for this little looped, if that kind of makes sense, for this loop space. So you've got the salvage edge you took care of right here, and then you've got the stitch right there for this piece. So the thought was is a lot of people use this stuff called Ketter Rail, and what it basically is is see two pieces that work together, and it's very similar to aluminum extrusion. So I was like, well, I wonder if we could use some sort of like an insert. So I bought some different sizes of this plastic or something, I don't know exactly what this material is, but it's pliable and it's pretty rigid, but it's also bendy and it doesn't seem to be like prone to cracking in the winter. So it's kind of a cool material. And the thought was, is like, oh, well, why don't we just build our own Ketter rail using the extrusion and the, pla and the actual fabric in this piece of plastic. So we built these little, attachment pieces. So you can see them all along the back side of this fabric. So we built this and this attaches to your actual fabric shell. So you take this piece and then you run it in through the little T-slot channel of your extrusion. And then that gives you your mounting interface with your extrusion. Now the cool thing is, is it's pretty easily removable and it's kind of a tight fit. So it's, it's kind of a nice system, I like it. And if I ever want to switch out the extrusions or if I want to pull the fabric quick to fix something, it's not like the end of the world to actually pull it out of this system. So there's maybe pros and cons to Ketter rail, but so far I haven't found a, a con to doing it this way. And we've been able to pull it in and out of the rooftop tent a number of times. So that's kind of the design. Right here is the actual screen that we're using. So I'll kind of show you the holes in the sizing. And then here is like this no CM mesh that I bought. You can see how much finer that is compared to this. But I just decided this was too flimsy and it's very fine, but it's too flimsy. So we went with this and we've got this, you can see this sort of zipper here. Now look at this, we've got this zipper, compare this to the zipper for my rain flaps. They're gonna be a whole nother level of beefy. We'll put these side by side. So you can kind of see those. 
So this is for the screen. This is gonna be for the rain flaps. So almost double the size and zipper. It's quite, quite big. So yeah, that's essentially what's going on. I just wanted to share a little update on that. I've got the whole clamshell part done. Now we just have to do the rain flaps and the zippers for those. And hopefully we will start actually assembling this thing. I've still got to buy some panels, but I've got some cool additions that I'm going to be doing to the outer shell of this. So I'm really excited. So stay tuned, but I just wanted to provide a little update. All right, well, that's going to be a wrap for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of your support. Uh, we're just about up to like 30,000 subscribers, which is pretty exciting. I'm kind of looking forward to crossing that milestone. Uh, I've got some big projects for the Forerunner. I know people always say that, like I've got big stuff coming. I do actually have some cool stuff coming for the Forerunner. It was supposed to be all delivered in like December slash February slash January time, like through the winter, and it just keeps getting delayed. But I think it should be here between May and June now. So I'm really excited to share with you some of those kind of new upgrades coming for the Forerunner, as well as kind of this offshoot project that I've just been thinking about lately that I think would be really sweet uh, and it would solve a lot of issues and also just bring some nice benefits especially for the, a lot of the off-roading that I do here in Minnesota as opposed to like your typical overlanding you might you know picture in say the Rocky Mountains or the West Coast so more details will come on those things soon uh, they're going to be sort of DIY related so I think it could be a really fun thing to share with you all. So stay tuned. I think we've got some exciting stuff coming in the future. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you all in the next video.